I used to think about what it would be like if I could find somebody that I belonged to. And I used to dream that I had a twin sister. You dreamt you had a twin sister? It's weird, isn't it? Well, it's very strange, yes. Anyway, um, I made her up. Because I was lonely and, and I wanted somebody to talk to and to share things with. And, uh, when I was young, she was really sort of a part of my life. And then when I found her, really found her, she's dead. You mean just a grave in the Pine Valley Cemetery? Well, that's exactly what I said to Myrtle yesterday. You know, I felt, um... You felt abandoned. You felt as if she deserted you. Can you understand that? Yes, Kelly, I certainly can, because I felt the same way. Tell me 
I am too old. I will go after you with those clippers. Oh, come on. You're younger than springtime. Oh, I'll settle for midsummer. <laughs> what a lovely summer it's been. Yeah. You know, I don't think the, your flies ever been prettier. Yeah. Uh, tell me, did Tara and little uh, Charlie get off to Willow Lake as they planned? Yes, yes. They must be quite settled in by now. I hope they have a good time. Oh, they're bound to with this weather. I was thinking of Tara and Philip. Tara told Philip that she needed time to think. Honey, Willow Lake is the perfect spot for that. Okay, I just hope with all and pray that when Philip comes back from his training and Tara gets home, things have just got to reconcile, okay? Sweetheart, I am praying with all my heart for that to happen. Joe and I were talking last night about Tara and Philip and about the two of us. It gets complicated with Tara, Joe's daughter, and Philip, my son. We let our loyalties divide us once, you know. Uh, Ruth, that is in the past and it must be forgotten. Not forgotten so completely that we can ever let it happen again. Now that's a very wise thought. You know, in a way, I think that our marriage is stronger and more filled with love because we almost lost it. Oh, yes, honey, once you nearly lose something, you come to realize how vitally important it is. Thank <laughs> you. 
Sponge, please. Session, please, and give me the quarterly. The source of the bleeding is from a massive tear in the upper lobe of the lung. It'll require an emergency lobectomy, doctor. Medicine bomb scissors, please.
won't be. It will be. We have to plan it. It will. He's coming around. He's coming. He's coming. Charlie? Baby? Charlie? Hey, son. Son, it's, it's your dad. Come on, can, can you hear me? Oh, 
Yeah, Neil. No. He's in Laguna Beach. He's going to Stanford this fall. Hey, Tina. What can I do to cheer you up?
I know. I know. Where that boy friend of yours go to, Achilles? Where do you go, which I... Five 
minutes. That fellow over there's got a clear field of fire on us, Richard. All right, look, I'll tell you what you do. You take the car, you get down the hill and you get help. I'll stay here, okay? You thought I'd let you drive off? Get it! in high school. Really? Yeah, I like the butterfly the best. <laughs> I don't think I could ever do the butterfly. Two or three strokes and I'm tired. No, girls aren't supposed to. Oh, come on. No, I'm serious. You know, it's a physical thing. There are muscles and everything they can. Oh, I see. <laughs> I bet you can teach me the backstroke, right? Yeah, it's easy enough. Well, yeah, you start out just like you're going to do the crawl. It's uh, with a kick and everything. And, and then, hey, you want me to teach it? Vicky said I could have people over to use the pool anytime I wanted. Well, great. Then why don't we set up regular lessons? Like, um, every day at 5 to when school starts? Fantastic! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Joe. Okay, huh? Well, hi, Uncle Joe. I wasn't expecting you home so soon. Oh, I'm sorry. Uncle Joe, this is Greg Huddleston. Greg Huddleston, this is my Uncle Joe Riley. Huddleston? Yes, sir. And I know your father, Talbot Huddleston. That's right, sir. Uh, Tina, yeah, I better get going now. Um, I, uh, I got my clothes out in the back, in the bathhouse. Tina said it was okay to use one of these suits. And, uh, well, my car, it's right up there at the end of the drive, so, uh, Tina, I'll see you later tonight, okay? All right. Bye, Greg. Well, I guess I better go get dressed and get dinner started or we'll never eat. <laughs> I see in there. 
Yes, yes, bone chips. Let's get every single one of those splinters out of there while we have a chance, okay? Forceps. I'll have forceps too, please. Okay. Extra long clamp, please.
everything's fine, sweetheart. When do you figure you'll be finished out there? Of course I miss you. Also, we've got a teenage daughter here, and I'm beginning to find her complications involved in that kind of situation. Like coming home and finding boys hanging around the house. No, no, honey. Nothing happened. Tina and I are getting along just fine. Okay, you let me know when your flight gets in, and I'll, uh, I'll meet you, right? I love you, too. Bye-bye. Well, my mother 
and let me bring home boys after school when she wasn't there every minute. Well, that's uh, something we're going to have to discuss and make a decision on when Aunt Vicky gets back. Well, what about in the meantime? I mean, Greg's supposed to come over tomorrow at 5 to give me a backstroke lesson. Backstroke lesson? Mm-hmm. He's a very good swimmer. He was on the team at high school, in case you didn't know. Oh, well, no, I didn't know that. And what about tonight? Well, what, what's happening tonight? What? Well, Greg and I have a date to go to the drive-in, uh -huh. and, uh... You might be interested in knowing that you can do just as much in a car in a drive-in as you can at home alone. I mean, so I guess I'm not supposed to be allowed to go to the drive-in either, right? Yeah, no, I think you misunderstand me. Of course you can go to the drive-in. Well, it comes out the same any way you say it. You don't trust me. So I'd better watch out all the time, right? Uh, look. It's too late to thaw out the pork chops, so, uh, I guess we'll have spaghetti tonight. <laughs>